Hey there guys, Infinity here, and it is 1028 on the 30th. I uploaded a podcast a little bit ago, and then I was guided to pull a couple cards for tarot for this next and last day of the month, and put that on here. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. First cards I'm going to pull are from the Angels of Abundance. Wow. That didn't take long. <laughs> Holy cow. I barely picked it up and shuffled twice. Oh, there goes another card. Okay, that's it. Two cards from Angels of Abundance. The very first one, it says, do the work. It's not enough to dream or pray. You've also got to take the positive action steps that you are being divinely guided to take. Consistently working on your priorities will make them flourish like a lush flower garden. Well, that's true. And it definitely supports (laughs) what I was talking about earlier for me personally. Um how I've been working my ass off and how it's all going and it's coming together. It's all making sense. And I have this focus and I'm taking the steps and I'm being guided to go in directions and I'm doing, taking those steps in the way that I'm being guided to do it. So that's really exciting. So personally, I can definitely relate to this and I can also relate to in the past, just doing a certain amount of work. And looking back and being like, yeah, well, I was getting back what I was putting into it because there was only so much I can put into it. So now things are are different, like I said. And I think this is a a good lesson for us all. (laughs) Realize it is not enough to dream or pray. You've also got to take the positive action steps that you are being divinely guided to take. So it's about taking responsibility for where you want to go and what's going on and... not allowing yourself to just sit in your head about stuff because people tend to do that a lot not actually take the action steps but take the mental they're in their head about stuff and then they talk themselves out of it emotionally and physically and energetically so then they never get to the action steps because it's it's been kind of dismantled at that point So what they're saying here is consistently working on your priorities will make them flourish. And, and that has been the theme with this whole finding my niche and my target audience and who I'm going to be targeting. Now, all that means is who are we going after to come in and work with and then that's going to open up the door for other people and other services and all sorts of different stuff to to take place that's what that's kind of about but this is about first you got to know what your priorities are and then you've got to put your energy into those priorities so first it's about figuring out what you should prioritize, what you want, what you're doing, how you want to spend your time, how you're going to divide that, and then doing the work to get it done. Okay, and the next card in and for the Angels of Abundance is Donations, Tithing, and Charitable Work. So both of these are work-related. Um, one definitely ties into the other, especially for me. And that's also something that keeps me motivated and passionate and super excited about is doing the work, laying the foundation and having that be the seeds to a much more fruitful future in which I can really put back a lot most of that into charitable rescues foundations all sorts of stuff um i don't even know what but it's going to be a lot and so again both of these have the 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 tying in of work but this is about donations tithing and charitable work so let me read the card it says give joy give joyfully to the organizations and people who 
spiritually support and inspire you and know that your generosity will be returned to you many fold in miraculous ways. The time, supplies, money, or other resources you donate will ensure that your positive energy multiplies. That's kind of how I see the way that I, I want to work and I'm going to be working in the future. Again, talking about me personally. Um, which is putting forth the free time to people in these consultations knowing that that's going to end up making it so much easier for people to go through the process of working with me. Um, and that's just priceless. So it's 45 minutes or an hour of my time, but it's going to be so beneficial and fruitful in the end. So it's giving to get, giving to get, so you can give and get and give and get and just keep churning that over and over and over and over and over again, just multiplying it on top of itself is really the energy that you have to see about that. So it's, it's a fruitful endeavor to think about giving a certain amount of yourself and your time. And this is what I've been doing for a long time now, since I've been doing this is giving a lot of my time, but seeing that come back in different ways and it being so beneficial to myself personally, to other people. Um, and now I'm going to be doing it in a, in a different way. So that's again, me personally. So again, give joyfully to the organizations and people who spiritually support and inspire you. So there's people that you listen to, that you watch their videos, that you go to their blogs, you're on their pages, you go to their Instagrams, you're, you're constantly being inspired by them. Um, give a donation, give a, give shout outs, do whatever you can to help them it support what they're doing because this kind of work isn't easy. It's usually lonely. It's hard. It's never ending. It's 24 seven. Um, and for a lot of us, it's, it's not, it has not been extremely lucrative. So it's nice for people to, even if it's five bucks, be like, hey, I've read a few of your articles or I watched your video and here's a $5 donation, you know, like it's all I have right now, but I wanted to say thanks. Like, that's nice. It's fine. Like, you don't, donations of thank you, like, unfortunately, this system that we're in in our society in this world in this day and age runs on currency runs on the exchange of of the idea of the energy of money in exchange for goods or services and we need to pay for our rent and our food and our electricity and our gas and our water and getting rid of our trash on the street and the gas in our cars and everything else requires cash of money and so your good and wishes and intent and love being sent to the people who are who are bestowing their free time to you in whichever ways that they are and there's a lot of people doing it in a lot of different ways um should be and not it's not like every day or every time or whatever but here and there be like oh I have a little bit of of extra cash and, and you'll find that the more generous you are with people like tipping double oh it should be a two dollar tip tip them five or six bucks drop a ten make somebody's day especially if they were super nice or if somebody's video was just extra inspiring or something led to a revelation and you're just like I don't know if I would have been there or seen that or done that or felt that if it wasn't for this person showing me this getting me to this point you know it's nice to acknowledge that it's good positive energy for both people and it just multiplies the energy multiplies you know when somebody just drops me a comment oh my god this made my day thank you so much you understand me I feel like whatever blah 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 it's like okay the five hours that it took me to do that post and make that video and the deal with all the shit and the technical issues that it took to do that that one comment just like lifted me up because i know that that it it lifted up that one person because they took the time to even write a comment so if somebody goes as far as to make a donation monetarily um that's like wow that's that's a big big deal 
and very much appreciated, I know, by everybody. And I hope that everybody that's ever donated to me understands how much I tr- do truly appreciate it. For a long time in my life, these last few years, I literally lived have lived off of donations um, just because of the nature of the way my life has worked. And so if I didn't have that in my life, I, I'm not sure exactly how things would be. I mean, I, I know that I'm in a situation where I'm always being taken care of and I'm in full understanding and faith of that, but it took me putting myself out there to go, well, I'm doing this instead of putting myself in some weird situation where I have a regular job that I'm not supposed to be in, shut off to everything I'm supposed to be doing just so I can make sure that I have the money for X, Y, and Z. I had to set all of that aside and throw caution to the wind literally with my own survival because I was being told, have faith, you'll be okay. You'll get you'll get the things that you need, shelter, food for yourself, for your animals. You'll get what you need. It might not always be comfortable, but for now you'll get what you need if you just stay on this path. And it's, it's been absolutely true. So, but it's, it's, that's not just me. It's a lot of other people too. And so, um, that's been involved in all that for me. So anyway, <laughs> a little bit about all that. I have a really it, charity and, and, and giving to people and giving what you have, even if it's a space in your home, you know, because you, you're feeling guided to do that. I've done that with complete strangers, homeless people that I didn't know, but I was being guided to invite them into my home. And so I did. And this one, this one guy, he, and it's, it's important for the story because of how how he reacted to me. He was this black guy and he was, he was afraid of me. He was literally afraid to take a drink or anything to eat. And, and I was like, you're afraid of me. Like I'm going to do something to you. And he's just like, it's really weird for some white lady who's not crazy, who has a nice home, who, you know, Hey, what are you doing? Stop it. Oh my god, you guys. Knock it off. Stop it. No, get down. Get down. Get down. Get down! Can you just listen? Sorry. Sometimes cats go out of their way to be assholes and cause problems. <laughs> I have to lay down the law, man. That just made me warm. Okay, uh, where was I? Um, oh, right. <laughs> So yeah, he was afraid of me and, uh, it, it took about a day for him to chillax and re- realize that there was nothing to be frightened of. <laughs> um, and I'll tell the rest of that story some other day, but, um, I have so many stories, but I'm not going to tell that story right now. But anyway, I, I just go as guided when it comes to giving and opening up and, and letting people in and literally, um, I've done it multiple times and then I've also had it done for me. So, um, it it really does help to be, it really is nice to be kind to people because it's really nice when people are kind to you. Okay. So here we go. I have the shadow scapes. Hi baby. I have my shadow scapes tarot here. see what we get for this. Woo! That one went fly. Holy <laughs> moly. That should be a good one. I'm told to keep going. That's hilarious. 
and they, they, it's like somebody picked it up and chucked it. So, we have, um, we have, as always, the angelic realm present, but being told very specifically to let you guys know that they're here. Oh, goodness gracious. All right. Like, I just got a chunk of cards, but I was told to put them back. Because that... I don't need a chunk of cards. We're not doing chunks of cards tonight. We're just doing a cup. Here we go. Just doing a couple. So, we got... I just pulled two cards. And this one that... Oh! Oh, that's why we got two more down here together. Oh, what do you know? These. <laughs> okay, so the two cards that were on, that flew on the floor and landed in my blanket that I have on the floor is the King of Pentacles and the Seven of Cups. And then the two cards that I just pulled is the Lovers and the Six of Cups. So we have Seven and Six of Cups. Oopsie. Seven and Six of Cups, the Lovers, and the King of Pentacles. Oh. Wow. Okay. Give me a moment, please. Let me take a look. I need light. I need light. Turn on some light. Holy moly. I've got this amazing ring light. It just, it's like the power of the sun. And I also need to light a couple of candles since two went out in the last little bit. And I don't usually do this work with any less than three candles lit. Not that it's not a, I can't do it in the dark with no candles. It's just a thing. Circulating positive energy throughout the area. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so once again, I kind of have this theme with the divine masculine, and I'm being told for those of you who kind of oh, I'm going to speak directly to the divine masculine. Okay, so for the divine masculine. You are, number one, strong dragon energy coming through for the divine masculine, especially the dragons are helping the divine masculine um, awaken further, especially those of angelic and dragon soul origin. So dragons incarnate and angelics incarnate are really feeling a lot of this dragon energy, a lot of dragon, um, stuff is coming up for them. They're just feeling this right now. If you're feeling this in your body, if you're feeling really warm, <laughs> um, we're speaking to you. Okay. So a lot of dragon energy um, coming in and helping you. They're talking about, they're saying to me right now, we're meeting with you in astral divine masculine. Those in, in the male, in male incarnate specifically, 
doesn't matter what your orientation is. Um, speaking directly to male incarnates. Now, for the female collective, this is going to be working out the aspects in which we deal with control and lack of control. Because in a lot of ways, our feminine, our femininity and the divine feminine is, has a lot of control. And it's when we incorporate the male aspects into that control that a lot of the females tend to fall off balance. So the aspects of being in control in a in the more male energy divine masculine way is going to be worked out more we may be faced with more situations in which we need to kind of be our own divine masculine really step into that energy more especially for those of us who don't have a partner incarnate and And that will help us get more in balance. So eventually we will have a, a divine union incarnate. Okay. Now, speaking again, back, going back to the males. The, the divine masculines incarnate. You guys are going through an evolution of from feeling very stuck and grounded. Literally, this card is like the king of pentacles he's part of this tree he's literally rooted in and he is the tree he's that stuck where he is he's a beautiful man he's got all of this super intent this pentacle is right above his head so again we're speaking to it's like a halo so we're speaking to the angelics incarnate and the the dragons incarnate and which are of angelic origin now it's really interesting these cards because we have this king of pentacles by himself he's reaching out on both to both sides of himself he's got his hands just outstretched he's got this huge pentacle at his, <clears throat> right on top of his head all this really intense divine energy and then we have these other cards we have the levers with a with very similar energy very very similar energy um there's a big sun uh at the very top it's glowing and we have the levers that i mean there's like literally doves and they're carrying this crown and and uh there's a lot of, with this, with the Shadowscapes Tarot, if you want to look this up online, we, so again, the cards are Six of Cups, Seven of Cups, King of Pentacles, and the Lovers. So you can take a look at these cards for yourself. They're very, very intricate, and they're not very big. So a lot of times I'm when I work with these cards, I have to take pictures of them, and then I zoom in with the picture into the picture because there's a lot of detail and a lot of symbols that are very important they're just hard to see because there's so much detail in these cards so what's interesting about these cards and i've, I've got the six of cups separated from the king of pentacles the lovers and the seven of cups so i have the seven of cups 
on the right of the King of Pentacles and then the lovers on the left of the King of Pentacles. And with his arms outstretched, she's pointing at both of them. And in both of these cards, the Seven of Cups, we have a couple, we have a, we have a female that's looking up. She's looking into a higher plane, a higher dimension, much higher. And we have the man, the divine masculine. He's like looking at it. He's like reading a map. Like, all right, that's where we're going. I'm going to, I'm going to study on how to get there. And she's going, that's where we're going. And I, I know how to get there. So they have these two. She's going by instinct. He's going by logic and he's going, we've got to do step A, step B, step C. And she's going, or we can just fly. <laughs> and then on the side that we have the lovers, it's as though like, you, this is this is the process in which we have to get to the lovers in this card. They're completely wrapped up in each other. He's holding on to her. She's kissing him. They've got all these beautiful things around them. They've got lilies and hearts and um, there's fairies that you can barely see and the doves and the sun. The moon is also depicted there in the background. Um, so... It's almost like the inside view of what's going on in that higher dimensional place of where we're looking at almost. It's like there's this journey that he's showing us. And to get from point A to point B, the the logical divine masculine who needs to feel some sense of control is saying I realize that this is where I've been I've been looking down looking and trying to piece out logic and and making sense of things on paper and I'm realizing in this new month decade and year at 11, no, oh my God, these cats, at 10, 55, 27 minutes into this feed and my cats being assholes, um, I'm not going to let them distract me, that coming down, finally getting received by the divine masculines, and again, we're specifically speaking Normally I speak to the entire like light body collective and I am, but this seems like very specific to the angelics and the dragons that they're starting to see and get like, okay, I like order. I like logic. This is my, this is my human aspect needing to make some sort of sense of stuff. And now I'm beginning to understand that there's just certain things that until I stop looking down and looking at paper, I'm not going to understand. <laughs> there's only so much you can isolate and study and read and before and be in your almost, it's a little above the hermit state, hermit state, but not a whole lot. When you're at this king of pentacles, your <laughs> I'm being told you're living in two worlds. You're like you're rooted in your space and your ways and your and your need to control, but you're also astrally like boundless, spiritually awoken, just not in alignment with where it is you're just, you've been trying to, to make a map to connect the dots, how to get from this point to this point. And finally, it's like, you can't make a map of it. You've got to just do it. So this is what it's showing. And this is what we're seeing. And in the meantime, we have the Six of Cups card. And in the Six of Cups card, it's so cute and beautiful. It's this party. It's this cute little tea party. It's this girl. She's by herself. She's got 
And she's got, got her stuffed bears and her cute dolls and she's making tea time and um but she's by this beautiful flowing river and there's all these beautiful uh fish and she's filling up these cups and she's also in her mind in her own fantasy and she's like going right now the the what is around me is is kind of the placeholder for what's to come and I know that I'm okay with that. I'm perfectly at peace with, with myself and, and, and the spirit that I have around me. And she's like saying like, I, I'm already setting the table for who's coming. I know that they're coming. I have faith in that. So, and with the divine masculine, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> I see that I'm here and I got to be here. We've got him in the middle. He's pointing at the seven of cups as he's looking down at the map going, yeah, I know. Yep. 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 I'm gonna, yep. Looking down at my map, making a plan. So you got to check all the boxes, make sure that this makes sense. I'm not making a move in any direction from this point forward until I know that it makes sense. And here's the problem with that. Things a lot of the time don't make sense, especially when you're trying to make sense of them, especially when you're awakening. And especially when you're somebody who has a divine soul mission, who needs to get on with point A to point B in faith, not in logic, not in, in, in scientific, firm, factual ways that we quantify things in this in this dimension <laughs> we're beyond that and that's what we're seeing with the king of pentacles it's like he's living in true world and in in the wake state he's here he's grounded he's got he's got a plan he's sticking to the plan he's not diverting from the plan he's understanding the plan he's making a plan blah 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 in his meditative state in his in his letting go when he's being creative or when he's in that zero point state or when he's meditating or when he's in astral, when he's connecting spiritually, when he's not even conscious most of the time, he's on a whole other level, completely absorbing all this stuff. And so what we're seeing is the culmination, the catching up of it, the affirmation that this is coming through with the, with the female all by herself. We have two cards with a man by herself and a female by herself. We have two cards with them together. One with them wrapped up in the lovers all in love together. He's there. He's with her. They're both focused on each other. They're creating magic together. They're telepathic. They're psychic. And in this other one, she's looking there and he's, she's pointing. He's looking down. They're like connected, but they're not. The female in the six of, in six of cups card, she's doing her own thing. She's planning. She knows that he's showing up to the party. She's just waiting. He is going, I am finally feeling outside of my head and my body and my station and I'm seeing and I'm being guided in ways that's making me understand I've got to walk into the dark to get to the light and I know that's what I need to do so coming up we're going to this transition for into the month of February we're heading into the last day of January and the energies are going to be about our divine masculine aspects getting more into balance and getting more real with themselves, getting ready to dump a lot of hurts and fears from past relationships, whether they're friendship relationships or love relationships. Um, they're ready to forgive and send love and dump a lot of this shit and clear a lot of this out and move on and realize and, and dismantle it in a way that is healthy, not shove it to the side and flush it down the toilet and be done with it. That's not going to help anybody. It's about seeing to the root of it, seeing why it's there, understanding it, getting the messages from it, getting the knowledge and the wisdom of it, understanding it on a soul based level acknowledging it, clearing it, loving it, letting it go for whatever, how many different aspects that, you know, that this is in play for. 
So for some people, it could be multiple um, situations like this. For some people, maybe it's just one that they still really need to get over or they thought that they got over, but they really didn't. Um, this is going to be the time where things are going to come up that's going to shine a light on exactly what it is that people need to get over and exactly how it is they need to get over it. And it's up for people to realize and recognize how exactly to do that, um, because they will be given the information, the guidance, the support and the direction. It's just up, up to them to buy the ticket and get on board and go for it <laughs> or not, <laughs> but this is what's coming up. Um, so there you have it, people. Um, let me see if there's anything else. Uh, please, for all souls, if you're able to get in the sun, I'm being told it's extremely important through the transition of, oh, Excuse me. Oh, it's two, three, four, twenty three, oh, four. It's eleven, oh, four on the thirtieth. Two, three, four, thirty five, fifty five, six, thirty six seconds in, or thirty six minutes into our, into our recording here, into our podcast. Oh man. Um. Yes, sun. So. It's important to get the rays of the sun, the photonic energies that are coming from the sun in these next, okay, let's see, 31, 1, 2, and 3. So 31, 1, 2, and 3. So the next four days of sun rays are going to be extra activating for people. So, um, which will help transmute energies, help make it easier to release and and transmute densities it'll make it them looser to let go of it'll make your heart softer your your brain more pliable your emotions more forgiving also being in water being in nature as usual but definitely take take long baths take showers go into the ocean go into whatever body of water you can get into if it's just your shower, so be it. But make it something and, and, sorry, have that be a space of healing. Make it intentional that you're loosening up the densities that are deep, deep within your energetic body stuck inside your physical body. So your energetic body, your physical body moving together and it's causing disruptions you may start feeling in these next couple days like there could be just different sudden pains or headaches or side aches or pains in your ribs or just weird pains all over the body and that's literally energy starting to come up because what they do they're big when they happen or when they attach or when an event unfolds or when there's a trauma they're big and they're a shock and they're a terror or a bruise to the to the energetic body and it ripples through all the other bodies and, and definitely your physical body as time goes on it it becomes smaller but not necessarily less powerful it just takes up it, it starts to and in the in the quantum way to see it it kind of like sucks itself into each other kind of into itself kind of creating its own black hole of energy within you that's like a actually really great way to put it because it continuously sucks energy so while it's shut off and causing a, a block in your system that should be free flowing it's also sucking in like a black hole sucking in energy it's like non-stop so and nobody has just one of those <laughs> so you have multiple of those so what happens is it's about letting letting the energy that's holding that black hole in space in your body it's the densities around it that's that gets loose so that black hole can literally expand out from itself to the point where it kind of cancels itself out it transmutes 
So it's it's like it's what's interesting about these energies is that the smaller that they are in volume, they're almost more powerful in strength because they've had to deep root and lodge in and hold on and continuously suck and suck and suck energy. If they're always taking up so much space, you're going to be hyper aware of it. And something this, this is what happens when people like really snap and break or have like major, major emotional disturbances and stuff. It's that, it's that trauma energy that's so big that they cannot function any other way. It's almost better that way because it's so obvious it needs to be dealt with, except for it's really never dealt with the proper way. It's more obvious than the ones that are much more smaller and more powerful that are deep, 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 deeply rooted. So these are also the energies that will cause a person to lash out and snap and be triggered really intensely for not from the outside perspective looking at the person to say, what just happened like nothing happened and you're literally losing your shit and it's because that major trigger like it's just had the right the right sauce to just turn that that smaller but very powerful energy system of itself on and big boom and the energy explodes it has to it's activated, it gets awoken, and boom, it explodes. And that is seen, and it presents itself in, in the way of a person literally losing their shit. Sometimes, a lot of times, they don't remember what they've done. Um, they literally are out of control. They're not, they're running on a program that they are separate from. They're, they're like automatic pilot. They're a witness to their own energy but it's not really their own energy it's the energy that's superimposed within them that's causing a reaction but it's not actually them so there's a separation from it and um it's actually really sad it's really really sad um so anyway don't necessarily remember how I got off on all that to be honest I'm so tired, but there you have it. That's that situation. This is your reading. I'm so, I cannot even remember how I got off on all that, but it is what it is. Um, six of cups, seven of cups, the lovers and king of pentacles. You guys, this is a really cool reading. Um, as far as the information that we got going forward, don't forget, we've got to really think about healing and clearing ourselves, balancing out the control aspects, moving from logic to faith as we move forward, especially understanding that for divine males. The divine masculines are really going to need the divine feminines to hold space for them to do what she's doing in this picture, which is setting the table and knowing that he's going to show up. Um, and what I mean by that is not necessarily that, that that's the romantic thing for every, it's like, it's romantical for everybody, but whatever that means for you in your life, whoever, and, and, and it doesn't necessarily need to be one person. It could be a slew of divine masculines. That's how it feels for me. Like I've got a group of divine masculines I'm waiting on, not just one. I've got a group. <laughs> so and they are angelics and they are dragons. So this is exciting for me. Um, and of course they are star seeds too and they are elementals as well. But because of what and who I am, those are my like first immediate, um, especially incarnate, those are my first immediate, uh, I don't know, right hand people. I don't even know how to put that. But but that's the way I've been shown it and, and, and have seen visions of it for quite some time now. So I'm not waiting on the one. It's about the collective, the male, the divine masculine collective and whatever that means to our entire collective. So it's holding the space understanding what they are transmuting and healing from it's beautiful to see this metamorphosis beginning to take place and shape in a really real way 
um, because it has been like in the tree, like the divine masculine has been the tree in the tree, which is a beautiful thing. Don't get me wrong. It's connected to Gaia. It's aware. It's, it's loving and giving and life affirming and all of those beautiful things, but it's very stationary. It's very grounded. It's not mutable. It doesn't change shape. Um, and 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 if for how beautiful and aware and connected a tree is there's only so far it can it can go and reach and 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 change its circumstances and um and that's the problem with that in the aspect of a person <laughs> because we need the free flowing mutable energy to take place and form within us as well so we can continue to move forward all right people <laughs> we're at the end of this this is a lot bigger than I thought it was. I, okay I'll pull one of these cards or one of these cards of course that wasn't that wasn't meant to be these cards were meant to be this message about doing the work charitable work working together giving back, being charitable, giving donations of your time and your money and your support in whatever way that you can um, to those that inspire and help you. And then just looking for these next couple days, just really think of all this energy that needs to be transmuted and whole space. Um, know that we all have certain aspects that we all need to healing to heal from all the time. We're never done, 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 done. I feel like I've healed a shit ton of stuff in my life, but I know that there's still stuff that I haven't even thought about that still hurt me. And that's the kind of stuff that needs to be healed, but we can't always have that just like right there all the time, all the different things that hurt us and all the different things we need to forgive and give love to and be moved past. It comes in waves and in stages as we're needed to get over it. So that's where we're at. Okay, guys. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Thank you so much for listening. I love you guys so much. Infinite love and blessings. Don't forget the key is to create. I love you already. And my next new one that I that I keep hearing and feeling and feel so good is live in love. Till next time, guys. Bye.